everybody, welcome back. Today is a little uh, unusual, I guess, from what I'd normally start my vlogs off with, because uh, we're not in the, the, the diesel or the, uh, or the Camaro, we're actually in the Corolla today. So if you follow my last vlog, I picked up a uh, 2006 Toyota Corolla, and um, I bought the car off my friend, uh, super cheap. Uh, I couldn't really say no to it. I got it for 200 bucks, has 196,000 miles on it, and um, he just uh, was sick of it. Uh, he had a transmission cooler line broke on the thing, and uh, when he pulled into work one day, and serpentine belt broke at the same time, and he said, "No, I'm just I'm done with it." So uh, he knows that uh, I usually try and buy and flip cars once in a while when I have the opportunity to, and I work on a lot of stuff on the side. So he asked me, he said, "Hey, you want to buy the car?" And I said, "Sure." So I went up and grabbed it. Didn't really know what I was going to do with it. Brought it back to my house, kind of looked at it a little bit, figured out that. Um, you know, there wasn't much for mechanics that it actually needed. It was just like some cosmetics or a lot of cosmetics actually. But um, so anyways, uh, fast forward four weeks later and I'm now about um, $1,200 deep into the car total with the tow, you know, to rent the trailer for the day and to um, also, that's the price of the car, the trailer, and then um, everything else I put into it. That doesn't count any of my labor, which I figure I probably have about 30 hours or so into the car in the last month so anyways I'm gonna give you guys a walk around of the car I'm just taking it for its final test drive right now and uh, a family member is actually gonna end up buying the car off me so I did like go through the car with like a fine tooth comb and uh, I'm gonna show you guys how you can flip cars uh, on the cheap and uh, what to look out for also when you purchase them so let's go on to that all right back home now I hate vlogging while I'm driving. Best part about this car, I guess, is that the AC actually works in it right now. So it's like 84 degrees today and I just took it for a quick ride around the block before I ended up uh, sending it out today. Like I said, um, family member's coming to pick the car up and uh, she's really excited about it. So uh, just a cheap little economy car. It's great for somebody to drive around town. Like I said, it's got 196,000 miles on it. There it is, 196,000 miles on it. Uh, no lights in the dash now. It did have an airbag light on when I bought it, uh, and it turns out to be the uh, the clock spring in the steering wheel. So I went to the junkyard, I grabbed a used clock spring, pulled the steering wheel off, uh, pulled the airbag, pulled the steering wheel, re uh, replaced the clock spring, which is super easy to do on these cars. Just a couple tabs and a couple plugs. Make sure you disconnect your battery and everything first to discharge the system. And then um, I ended up recharging the AC system with just like a can of that um, recharge um, air conditioning. So it already worked pretty good. I just need to top it up a little bit. Um, I cleaned the dash all up really good. These Corollas were also known for um, solder joints to go bad inside the clock on this thing. Like stupid stuff like that like drives me crazy. If I have the opportunity to fix it, like I'll, I'll do whatever I can to fix it before I replace it. But um, I was able to pull it out and um, I have a soldering iron here and I just heated up the uh, solder joints on the inside of the circuit board. There's like two little diodes or something in there that uh, the, the solder joint cracks apart and you just solder them back together and put it back together and it works perfect. So other than that, I just cleaned everything all up. I, I'll show a couple pictures of like uh, what this thing looked like before I actually got in here. It was pretty disgusting actually. I'm not a Toyota guy at all. Like I buy Hondas and um, Chevys, you know, most of my stuff is all Chevy or Honda. But um, any of the Japanese stuff really, like they build a good car. For a car that has 200,000 miles on it, this thing drives fantastic. Like you would never know that it has this many miles driving it around with the air conditioning running and uh, I'm sure it gets great gas mileage too, but let's uh, walk around and I'll show you what I did. All right, one of the first things I had to address in this car was, um, was the rocker panels. They all rot out on these cars that I learned and they all rot usually start right here, at least in New England anyways. So those are, when I actually started poking at this, let me roll a picture real quick of what it looked like before. So you can see that after that, I had to cut all of this out right here, all the way down. I started looking at patch panels online and they had uh, full quarter panels that go from here and go all the way down. But they think they they actually cut off like right here. So I'm looking at it. I'm like, well, it's 150 bucks for the panel. I'm not going to use any of the back section. I'm only going to use the lower section. And then I'm still going to have to fab a piece up in the front. And if I want to buy the whole rocker and that quarter, now I'm looking at like 250 aside just in sheet metal. So I ended up going to Tractor Supply and I just picked up a piece of sheet metal, it's like a 18 gauge sheet metal. I don't know what it was, like one by 18, one foot by 18 inches or something. And um, I just ended up forming it all up myself and just uh, bending it. I bent it the correct way down this way once I cut it all out. Uh, and then bent the tabs in, well, the tabs up on the insides after I cut some release and stuff in it. Filled it all and then, uh, and then painted it. 
This is a, um, a Napa paint. I use um, all their Martin Senior products. I love their paint. And actually, funny fact about this car is that um, it's actually a single stage paint. Everything I read, at least on the Toyota forum, said that um, Toyota used a single stage paint on these cars to save costs back then. And the problem was, is that um, if you didn't keep up with the paint, they turned to like chalk. So the, the paint on this car was very, very chalky and flat white looking. So I went through the whole car. I 3M compounded everything through the three-step program and then uh, waxed the whole thing in a Carnuba um, wax and it came out really good, like the paint on it. You know, for something that has this many miles on it, like it looks pretty damn good. That's what really killed the, the appearance of the car before. So I didn't paint anything in the back of the car other than the rocker. Right, you can see actually my tape line right there. It's not perfect, but it's smooth. I sanded it all out and stuff, but trying to get anything to blend is not my specialty, but I'm not a body guy. So it came out pretty dang good though. The rest of the rocker is fine. I actually, um, there's some cavities, so some holes in the bottom to the cavity of the rockers. Um, you know, from the factory, it's like little plugs. So I popped out those plugs and then um, I filled it all with fluid film in the bottom. It's like an oil to, to keep the, from any of the rust from spreading. So uh, let's move on to the front of the car and talk about what I did up here. Um, I did new headlights. The headlights that were on the car were completely unsalvageable. Uh, it just wasn't worth it at all. So uh, I went out and bought I can I can restore headlights, but um, the tabs are broken on them on both sides because like, it was hitting the front before. So the bumper is aftermarket, and that fits like crap. But um, you know I had to push it in the best I could. It still sticks out on the edges right there. And I replaced the plastic pieces that like hold it in right here, and it still doesn't work. Just the bumper is just like too short, just aftermarket. The fenders are still OEM. The hood's still OEM. Those all fit really good. But um, I repainted the the nose and I repainted the hood. The hood had so many rock chips on it on the front edge of it, I just decided I'm just going to paint that. So I painted that with the new headlights, I painted up the grill and everything. Let me, you know, let me throw a picture up real quick of what it looked like before. So after the hood and the headlights and everything else and the grill was done, I decided just to do the, the bumper cover as well. So bumper cover, hood, and then both rocker panels. And uh, I did all that with a, a pint of single stage paint, uh, which ended up, you know, costing me with a hardener. Let's see, with a hardener, reducer, and the um, and the actual paint itself is about a hundred bucks from Napa. So, hundred bucks in paint, uh, seventy bucks in headlights, um, rocker panels. The sheet metal only cost me like eight bucks. So, I mean, for your average like DIYer, maybe that's not like the best project to do. Uh, but even so, you could probably bring it to a body shop, and they could probably do something for you for three or four hundred bucks, I'd imagine. But um. You know, I guess the biggest thing is if you're going to flip a car, try and stay away from the rust. At least in Massachusetts, they have, um, you know, the safety inspections won't allow any holes in the body at all. So anyways, whole car has been buffed. Um, I did brand new drums in the back. So it's got um, Bosch drums on both sides. It has two new wheel cylinders. It has uh, centric brake shoes in the back. And then I did um, the quiet cast Bosch rotors up front. I love those rotors. You can get them on Rock Auto really cheap. And they have like the, the ceramic coating around the outer edges of them and they don't rust. They're a fantastic rotor. So I did those and then um, the Bosch pads in the front. And I did all the brakes for like just over 200 bucks on it. So they, that's one thing, like, especially when you're trying to sell a car as a selling point, you want to have uh, new brakes on it. So you can say you have new brakes and new tires, which is another thing I did is I put brand new um, Westlake tires on it. These Westlake tires actually had really good reviews online for a Chinese tire. They said that you weren't getting greatest mileage out of them. I think like 30 or 40,000 miles, but for $145 for all four tires shipped to my door, I couldn't beat the price. So 145 bucks, and then I spent another $108 mounting and balancing them. So now we got brakes, tires, um, and then the rims. I'm gonna throw a shot. I just finished these yesterday. Look how good they came out. I started looking around the junkyards and stuff trying to find rims to this car because they were so shot. Let me throw a picture up real quick of what they looked like before. That's what they looked like before and I ended up stripping all the paint off them. It's used like a chemical uh, aircraft stripper and just brush it on and then um, after it's brushed on you can just use like a, I used a Bondo trowel and just scraped it and I did that like three times and rinsed it all off and then you soap it and scrub it really good because you want to make sure you get every bit of aircraft stripper off that thing. And then I just used the Rust-Oleum uh, silver paint. We use a primer, a wheel primer first, put a couple coats of that on there and then you put a, uh, a wheel paint on it and then after the wheel paint is done then I, I usually put one to two coats of silver on and these I put about two coats to get good coverage 
And then after that was done, I put um, three coats of the spray can clear coat. So they're not going to last forever, not like a factory rim, but if you keep up with them, they'll still last a long time. They look a million times better. I was going to buy like a set of refurbished wheels. They wanted like 350 bucks for them, and I ended up refinishing these myself for like 40 bucks. And like from a distance, they look pretty darn good. And they all look like that too. So now rocker panels are done, wheels and tires are done. The front of the car is good. I got uh, new headlight bulbs in there. I adjusted those. Um, this rocker panel too. I'll show you. This one was uh, it was pretty gone. The whole bottom section of it, there was nothing left to it. So you can see, I think that it came out really good for an amateur. You know, I'm not the best. You can still see my fade line right there. But anyways, inside of the car, I showed you guys a clip of that a little while ago. I was able to score those two factory floor mats missing out of the car when I got it. I was able to find two more from the junkyard. That one, which is still in bad shape, but the one that was in here literally had like a an eight inch hole in it. So I got that one. That was the only one I could find that was tan. I was able to find another back one too. So we got all matching OEM floor mats. I did replace the seat bottom, which I think that'll clean up. I'm gonna clean that real quick, but um, it had like cigarette burn holes and everything in the old one. I, I just couldn't even salvage it. So I replaced that. Um, what else did I do mechanically? I did do an, um, an intake manifold gasket on this thing. Now, like when it was when it was warmed up, the car would run at about 700 RPMs, and it would shake really bad. I ended up uh, shining my lights and stuff down inside the intake, and everybody said that the O-ring intake gasket manifold on these things would shrink and they would flatten out over time, and they'd develop an air leak inside. So I changed out the um, the gasket itself, pulled the manifold right off me. I, I changed the whole gasket and, like. 20 minutes it was super easy to do and um that fixed that problem so no more issues with that uh, another thing i did was i i always go through and i change all the filters on any vehicle i buy it doesn't matter how much i spend on it if i'm going to resell it i always do spark plugs i always do the engine air filter and i always do the cabin filter on the inside of the car now most people forget about the cabin air filters on any vehicle actually and they think it may not be important but it's very important to check to see if your vehicle has a cabin air filter on this one is behind the glove box you just push your tabs in on the sides uh glove box pops down and then there's a, a plastic piece in the back that you pop out and then the filter itself slides out and what that does it filters the air from the outside of the the car to the air coming inside the car so everything that is going through that filter is what you're going to be breathing inside the car when you're sitting in it with the windows up so if that thing is full of acorns and mouse poop then guess what you're going to be breathing all that into your your lungs and your face it's for like 10 bucks, I mean, I think I bought it on rockauto.com. I bought it for like $5 and um, put that in there. That's all set, engineer filters all set. I was able to get a set of spark plugs for like $10 for it. Um, what's the other big money stuff? So like really it was like the brakes and the tires where I spent all my money on this car. I'm mounting and balancing, the tow, the price of the car itself. And then like all the little stuff adds up. Like body work is really expensive. I probably have like three, $300 or so between like sandpaper, filler, a lot of the stuff I already had here, but I still like build it onto the sheet just because it was materials that I used. So um, all of that stuff. And then the paint itself, you know, was another hundred bucks. And then uh, just cleaning everything. I have a lot of hours into this car, just going over everything and cleaning it all up and making sure that it looks good. And typically I probably wouldn't have spent this much time working on this, like as I would have like on another flip I'd bought, but because I knew family was gonna get it, I spent a little more time on it. So anyways, I'm really happy with how it came out. And anybody can flip a car. It's not difficult. Um, you just have to make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into and you know how much money it's gonna cost up front to, to spend, you know, and then what you can get out of the car on the return in the long run. So like on this car, I spent the 200 bucks and I have um, just about $1,000 into it and then price of the car. So about $1,200, I figure, give or take a little bit, maybe 50 bucks or so. So say like 1250 I have into the car. And I think realistically right now, like the book value on the car is like $2,500. So um being as it's family i'm gonna sell it a little cheaper than that i think we're gonna get about two grand for it and then um you know i got a family member that's happy has a good reliable car and i still make some money in my pocket out of just putting around with it after work but um anyone can do it just make sure that you know what you're just getting yourself into i don't typically make videos like this but um i figured that what the heck i'm not working on anything else right now and kind of put a the Duramax project on hold right now. I do have a couple things to finish up on the, the truck. I'm gonna do uh, glow plugs on it this week. I'll probably do a video on that because I found that uh, my um, power strap is 
rotted out and the gold plugs in there and so i got new um ac delco gold plugs for it with the new straps and i can't find my straps i gotta try to find them somewhere but anyways i'm gonna do that this week since i got the week for vacation and um i'll probably put around with the camaro a little bit and stuff too here and there but truck and the camaro is still here and uh we're gonna get this thing out hopefully in the next day or two and then i'm going to be picking up um 2006 acura tl if you watch my last video uh you'll see that uh, i went to I actually towed the car the same day I towed the Corolla. It was my brother's old car, and um, he just doesn't have a use for it anymore. It needs a transmission, but uh, I think I'm going to take that as my daily. So I'm going to sell my uh, 2004 Subaru Legacy in the upcoming month or two, and then um, put a transmission in the TL. And I may do it myself, or I may have somebody do it. I'm not entirely sure yet, but uh, stick around for that, and you guys will see that as well. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Oh, and one more thing. I'm at like 712 subscribers now or so, so I'm like less than 300 away from being monetized. So if you guys haven't subscribed yet, make sure you like my videos if you liked them. If you don't, hey, give me a thumbs down too. But if you did, make sure you like it and then uh, make sure you smash that uh, subscribe button in the corner down there below. It'll, it'll be greatly appreciated by me and uh, I'll see you guys again next time. Thanks.